day guys welcome back again the pour that I did yesterday with my 70% glue and 30% water that I did in the blues I'm going again with the same mix same ratios etc but I'm going in the pinks and purples so what I thought I would do is do the blue one which I've done tick uh, the pinks and purple today tick tomorrow I thought I might do the same sort of thing in greens and then I do a turquoises and then maybe I'll do a reds and and just and you know black and whites and then browns and just see how it goes so do a whole series in my 70% glue this is Elmer's glue all I have done the Elmer's school glue works beautifully so I don't have a problem with that and 30% water so you can do 70 grams uh, if, well no 700 grams 300 grams 7 ounces 3 ounces 700 mils 300 mils whatever way you want to do it so that's it I've got 50% pouring medium 50% paint so in my cups I've got 50 grams of uh, pouring medium and I weigh it all so that I know I'm getting consistent results each time oh there's a nail for some reason my little push pin has gone right through I wonder why Let's just move him over here maybe into the corner just one sec let me get my hammer and these big push pins you really have to hammer in sorry about the noise you have to hammer them in oh that's better yeah, I don't know why I was getting nailed through there it never happened before yeah so give them a good hit with the hammer make sure they're all in all the way so they get a nice level working surface just turning my air conditioner down I'm getting hot in here okay uh, what was I saying 50 grams of pouring medium to 50 grams of paint with the blue one do you remember how I was said I couldn't stretch that middle cup and I thought I might have too much paint because it was stretching that way but the middle I couldn't stretch because obviously this paints pushing in on it so that was 800 grams I'm going 700 grams I've only reduced it by 100 grams so I've got one two three four five six seven cups 50 grams of pouring medium 50 grams of paint that's a hundred that's 700 grams so 700 grams I'll show you the blue one it's still wet because I just did it yesterday that's it there so going similar thing I want to achieve with the nice big cells and some background and hopefully not such a wobbly center and also I won't flip two at one end and one at the other I'm just going to do one two three that way hopefully I don't get that because when I do one here and one here and then one here I always get like a, a sort of an hourglass sort of shape so anyway I'm going to just try it and see how it goes put all these close to each other so that I can just go straight across I sprayed the cups with my silicone spray I just get this one from Bunnings but as long as it says silicone spray I'm sure it's fine and then just wipe the excess out with the paper towel you don't want too much in there um, oh silicone so treadmill silicone oil 100% silicone for the cells and I'm going to go three drops in each but not in the black and the white one two three apparently I can't do two things at once so oh look I am I'm talking and dripping and counting is that three things one two three one two three get in there right uh, now mix really well I don't need to tell you guys each time do I to mix really well I think you've heard me say it enough times to avoid your worms now the other thing yes you do have 50% pouring medium and 50% paint and I start with that always start with that but then some paints are going to mix up thicker like my black and my white always mix up thicker and some paints are going to mix up thinner so even though I have started with 50-50, as I always do, it's a start. 
you know, it's, it's a base from where to start with. The black I had to add a bit of water to, the white I had to add a bit of water to, and I, from pre previous experience, I know that my white has to be a touch thinner than the other paints, otherwise it splits. I don't know why. Maybe it's got something to do with the pigments, um, the way they make the paint at Global, I don't know, but it certainly splits if it's too thick. Um, the This lovely plum colour that I make myself, I had to add quite a lot of paint to that one after my 50% of paint. Uh, it was really quite thin. It's on a magenta base, so it's, it's a thin paint. So I had to add more paint to that. The purple, I had to add uh, more water. So as I said in the other video, don't hold it way up here and expect to get a mound. You're not going to because there's too much weight dropping in. So just hold it like that so that the base of the stick is level with the top of your cup. And then you should see your little mound on a mound. Okay. No point holding it way up here and having the weight of the paint drip straight through. You're going to get a different effect. Just like that. Mound on a mound on a mound. Okay, so that's it. Hopefully that helps you guys with your consistency. All right, let's do this. I've talked enough. Black. Oh, actually, I'm going to talk some more. You know I am. I have got today two pinks, a dark and a light. Two purples, a dark and a light. A black and a white, and then I've got this gorgeousness in the middle, which is kind of a combination between the pink and the purple. And that's how I like to do it. You've heard me say millions of times, you need light against dark to make pretty cells. So I've got the black against this pink. I haven't used the really light pink. I found that if I put the black next to a really light colour, um, same as you would with a white, a light, a really pale pink, a really pale blue, it kind of goes more of a greyish shade. So I've just put it over here next to this dark purple plummy colour instead. I, find, I found that, um, like with my marina colour, my really pale blue, if I put it next to black, it kind of goes a greyish shade. Um, so yeah, you can just assume that any really pale colour should not go next to black as in um, like white as well. And yellow, yellow should never be put with black. Goes an awful baby poo green color. Not that I have anything against baby poo. I just don't like the color in my paintings. This is lovely. This is the first time I'm pouring with this plum color. I made it myself. It was an accident really. I was looking for dioxazine purple and I made that and I thought, whoa, that is really pretty. So I kept it, wrote down what I did and then moved on and continued to experiment, experiment making the dioxazine purple, which I have now got. It's this one, beautiful colour. And I do have videos on how to make those colours up from colours that you hopefully already have. I only want two layers, so I'm just going to have to finish this off. I prefer two thicker layers of paint, that way the colours really stand out. If I have three layers, I have such little thin baby layers, you can hardly see the different shades of colour. It all just blends into one. So that's what I prefer. And you can see it's a nice thick paint, it's sitting on top. So my latest sort of experiments, and I know I'm always experimenting, looking for the perfect pour, taking you guys along for the ride. But I'm basically doing the video so that I can record what I'm, I'm doing, so I can look back on them and say, this is what worked, this is what didn't work. I used to write it all down and it was such a pain. Now I just video them and it's much easier. And that one's getting a little bit, hasn't getting enough paint as the other, so I'll just move him over. So that's why I'm doing the videos. So. Um, I can remember what, I'm, what works and what doesn't work. So 
So what has been working really well lately is my 70% glue and 30% water mix. No Floetrol. Floetrol gives you those little tiny cells, whether you want them or not. And I think it's got a lot of water in it, so it's kind of diluting my paint. Uh, and my cells haven't been able to stretch as well without losing their shape as I would like. But I'm finding I'm getting better results from just the glue and water. I used glue and water quite a oh, well, it was a while ago, and then I just what I when I why I stopped using it was because when it dried, it was getting those little tiny pinholes um, because it's got so much glue in it. If there was an air bubble in the glue, when the glue sort of dried, that it would pop that little air bubble and leave a tiny little divot. So that's the only reason I started putting in 10% flow troll. But now when I look back on it, I think I would rather have those tiny little pinholes and if you don't want them, feel free to torch them. I just don't want to torch um, over my finished pour because I don't want more baby cells to come up. So it's a it's kind of a trade-off. I'd rather have the big beautiful cells and have a few tiny little pit holes. So that's what I'm doing. That's why I'm experimenting with I'm gonna do the blue as I said yesterday and the pinks and purples today. Well, I can't pour tomorrow, I have to work. But um, my next day off, I'll do the greens. I need to go and visit my sister. She had a big operation last week. I'm not going to get into it, but it's one of those nasty things. Um, I need to go and visit her, see how she's going. She lives about. Oh. Maybe an hour and a half, two hours away from me. I don't get to see her a lot, but I will go and see her on my next day off. Um, oh, and then I've got a workshop on Saturday, which means today's Monday, so I'm working Tuesday and Wednesday. And then I need to go and see my sister on Thursday. Friday I'm working. Saturday I've got a workshop. Which means I won't be able to pour again until Friday. Ah, what am I saying? Sunday. I won't be able to pour again until Sunday. But I do have videos waiting to upload, so you'll still get a video because when I do have a day off, I might do two or three videos in a day, and then when I'm working, um, I'll upload those. Now, I'm going to just flip these over in the middle, as I said last time. I'm not going to put them up here, two up there and one down here, all in the middle. So no fighting for space, you guys. You can just all have your own space. And I might push these over to the side just a bit so that the middle guy can have more room to expand if he so wishes. Yes. Um, and hopefully these two won't take over and run in. That's the plan. That's the plan, Stan. Oh, colours. Um, right, so this is this is just a container that I got from Kmart. So I've put my lovely plum in there. Nearly, fin nearly finished. Um, lots of people were using it at my workshop, so I need to fill it up, make some more. That's the dioxazine purple that I made. Again, it's just in a little generic container. Because Global don't do a dioxazine purple. I have to make my own. Mulberry purple, regular purple, uh, rose, that's one that I made myself. Now both pinks aren't a hot pink, they're kind of a muted pink. I didn't want something too bright. And then I've got black and white, so those are my colours. So it's going to be sort of a purpley pinky tone. As I said, nothing too bright, hot pinks. I've toned them down, so they've all got a slight shade of um, a tinge of purple in them. Okay, so the paint's released. Let's do this. I'll try not to lose it all. <laughs> you 
Oh, you're gorgeous, yes you are, don't you go anywhere. Wish I could flip these without getting a, a drip down. See, I'm just flipping them faster down so that from up here it isn't dripping down. I think that's what's causing it. Right, now I want to put some paint back on my corners because it's quite quite a thick mix. And as I said, I've, I've only made up 700 grams instead of the normal 800. So I do want to make sure that my corners are covered. I was actually going to tape all the edges today all the way around and make like a little wall all the way around and then I chickened out but I will just to see one one pour I will um, just to see what happens if I can actually keep all the paint on the surface tilt it around and then take the um, the tape off what do you think When you're pouring the leftovers out of your cup, do it nice and slow. Don't just um, rush them because they tend to get more muddy. So just nice and slow. So these are empty now. I'm going to get rid of them. Oh, I am liking these colours. Now let's hope I've done the right thing by <laughs> reducing the amount of paint, eh? They're still kissing up. They're still touching. And I've got this pretty much the same amounts here, so I don't have like any weird shapes. Let me just see if I can move some of this around a bit before I start torching. There's no reason why you can't, really. Really. Is there? No reason. All right, let's do this. Oi, settle down, big boy. I have to go slower, otherwise he cracks it. Gets upset if I go too fast, don't you? Swirl the butane around, he doesn't like that. about moving the paint around a bit first I don't know whether um, because I've looks okay because I've moved the paint and stretched it maybe there's not an, as much color underneath for the paint to come through but it seems all right so far as long as you don't stretch it too far it should be all right Now, I don't want too many cells. I want some background. Let's just see what that looks like. We well, shouldn't have this over here. This It annoys me, but what can you do? Because the rest of it's really pretty stripy background, and then I've got that. And it's always the middle one, isn't it? Always. All right, I just want a few more cells here and here. In this section here. Come on, come up and play. I'm really liking these colours. Haven't got that much of the plum, but you can see the plum in there. There's little tiny cells in there. So cute. And I've got some stripes with the plum, so hopefully more will pop up. It's not much happening here. Let me go one more time. coming up now I obviously didn't get too close I don't want to get too close though because you know it makes caterpillars got a caterpillar there 
Well, there's a few around. Not too bad though. All right, now I'm just getting greedy. Less is more, Julie, put down the torch. Okay, um, I've got a corner catcher. I haven't got too much to cover these bits, those bits, and I need to go side to side to get those bits covered. So let's take the weight of the paint down first. It's sitting about here at the moment, and now we should be able to. See, this is the problem. We're tilting that way, I'm going to lose that. I'm going to have to hang on to that because I don't want to lose that. It's the problem with having these triangles. You know, you try and cover your sides. Oh, I'm nearly there. Go me. Yay! Yay! She says shocked at how easy it was. All right, take that right around. I don't want that dripping anywhere. There's just a tiny little bit there that needs to go over. I'll fix that up later. Um, yeah, I think that's okay. Just looking at this bit here where I put the corner catcher. So I caught the paint and then pushed it back. So I've got that line, but let's just leave that for now. I haven't got as much paint as I normally use on, so I just want to make sure I've got enough to cover the whole thing before I start worrying about an itsy bitsy little problem like that, because it's not a, it's not a major problem, is it? You know, I should have done this section first that I didn't like, because that's I had the most amount of paint on there. I should have taken care of it then. Radio, let's zigzag and zag zig. I need to get way over there, which is a bit of a problem getting this bit. Let's pick up some paint. I'll need to bring it all the way over here because I need to get rid of that. See, the rest's gone over and I just have to get rid of that little bit there. I won't worry about that little corner. I'll just leave that. That's not a problem. Well, maybe it is a problem. Off you go. Go, 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 go. Thank you. Come back. Hey, you guys. Look at my middle section. It stayed stretched out. Woohoo! I pretty much have equal sizes. With the other one, I had this much there, that much there, and I had a little bit in the middle. That's actually worked. What I was trying to achieve. Now, what do I need to do? Hmm. I can't really do much. I'm, there's not that there's no excess paint left on the surface if i start keep moving it around i'm just going to um ruin uh cells and things so i'm going to fix my edges Oops, you need to be pink and then i'm going to torch a little bit i find i can torch when i've got lots of background like this i can actually torch and get up some of those really cute little cells and it actually adds some interest to the pool so over here and here where it's a little bit empty I'll have a few and a few there and a few there just like so all right now while those contemplate popping up to say hi I'll just fix my sides it's not a lot to do I've got Pretty much well covered, so not a lot to do. And then run my little tool around, catching the drips. 
How are those cells popping up? Hmm. See how they're small they are? That's because there's not much paint left on the surface. So they pop up and they've got nowhere to expand to because there's not, there's not much, um, like there's too much restriction on them because there's not much paint. So they pop up and they can't grow. So they probably stay that size. Whereas if you still had lots of paint on your surface, when they popped up, there wasn't as much resistance and then they were able to expand a little bit more. Does that make sense? There's something in here. Oh, maybe there's not. Just maybe it was a bit of undo, unmixed paint. Shouldn't play with it, should I? There we go. It'll be all right. No one will notice that. How's this side? That's good. I just need a tiny bit of paint on the corner there. And that is done. And I've got some cells up here, I've got some there. Now I just want to, when I came around this side, it just looked a bit top heavy along here. I'm just gonna try and move everything down a tad. And that's opened up some of these cells down here. I probably, I got a bit close there, I got a bit carried away there. Um, how's this looking? Go under there. Check my last corner. So I'm happy with that. I, I've always done 800 grams of paint on this size canvas. So I'm happy to know that I can actually get away with 700 grams. If you want to know what that is in ounces, divide it by 30. 700 divided by 30 and that will tell you how many ounces you need for this 12 by 24 inch canvas so it's not hard just use your calculator 700 divided by 30 all right love it I reckon that's got to be one of my better pours don't you think I could probably still get away with putting less oil in no no I, I like I like the amount of cells I do and I've still got my background got my stripes All right let me get my messy gloves off and I'll take you in and show you some of these gorgeous cells these ones here that have got the pink they've got pink and then they've got the dark dioxazine purple and then they seem to have a lighter purple in the middle so those are so cute oh, I love this one I wonder what the green one's going to look like next. Bet you I can't wait till Sunday. Bet you I'm going to have to do it now. Hey? <laughs> Bet you. Do it now. Show it to you next week. Okay. So, there's my little baby cells that I've torched afterwards. Now these ones have got the white rings around them and as you can see my white has not split. So whether that's got to do with not having the flow troll in there or whether it's just got to do with me thinning it out a little bit more. Now those are the ones that have got the, is that them? The white rings around them. It's a lot of white rings. Normally I my white gets lost, which is a real shame. But uh, seems to be okay today. There you go, that's the end of it. Let's come around here. So there we go, happy with that one. I've told it like this so I don't get that light shining on it. Okay, so thanks for watching. And um, please like and subscribe and share. If everyone shares a couple of my videos, It'd be great I can get them out there to more people. 
All right. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.